we love to talk about small business success on Summer Money. There are many startups that never make it off the ground. So what makes a startup fail? And more importantly, how can you make sure it doesn't happen to your business? Well, our first guest tonight is pretty well placed to answer that question. Nick Rick Chisholm is of the founder of the Innovest SME and specializes in turning businesses around. Rick, welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, now, as I mentioned in the introduction, Summer Money is a show where we, we celebrate small business and we celebrate small business success. But as we flagged, you know, there are often a lot of challenges that entrepreneurs and startups face that they can't necessarily overcome. Talk us through your experience and what you've seen in this sector. Well, uh, that's a very good question, Natalie. A lot of uh, startups especially end up struggling with business knowledge from the get-go. So they come out of university they have all this knowledge and then they find out when they go into uh, running their own business all of a sudden they're not so flash out of nine out of ten other, other things that they could have been you know learning before they went into business mm. so it's a it can be tough from the very beginning so what do you label as being then I guess the top five points as, as to why startups fail well I would say number one is the lack of business knowledge mm. and uh, statistically 76 percent of businesses fail due to a lack of business knowledge of the entrepreneur strategically managerially uh, the second reason i would say would be to do with their sales and when we talk about sales today it's not just sales 101 you've got to be a teacher you've got to be an educator so you need to know a lot about you know how to persuade and be ethical in doing so uh, the third reason i would say is to do with time management so there's a lot of things out there you can use to help you get really good at being uh, efficient at time. And the fourth would have to be, in no particular order, cash flow under capitalization. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say the fifth would be marketing overwhelm. And very close to that would be staffing. So with marketing overwhelm, what I mean by that is that there's so many avenues to market your business mm. and a lot of people in business don't know where to, to best market their business. Mm, just on that poor cash flow idea, I mean, and, and under capitalization, we were speaking um, yesterday with um, a financial planner offering sort of you know, new financial resolutions for the year. And she said that particularly it is your, your SMEs, your, your small business owners, who can in fact sometimes have the most difficulty when it comes to, to separating their, their personal finance and their business finance and, and that really does put them in strife in the longer term. That especially applies to sole traders where they've got the one bank account. But you know at any one point in time 87% of SMEs are struggling and wrestling with cash flow and they say that up to 90% of every business that goes under has or the, the reason why they went down is because it was a cash flow problem. Separating the cash flow between the two, what, what happens with a lot of startups is it's the one bank account and as they struggle with cash flow, mm. they stop paying themselves or pay themselves a very small amount. In my first startup, I slept on the floor for the first 10 years and paid myself $100 a week, which is not the smartest thing to do. So there's a lot of lessons in uh, what not to do if you look at my first business in the 80s, mm. up until the recession we had to have, mind you. Of course, and j just with that in mind, I mean, just to touch on, on your own personal story there, you know, sleeping on the floor, paying yourself $100 a week, it doesn't sound like the, the healthiest environment when it comes to the mental health of those who, who right. opt to go into you know, developing a startup or, or have that you know, entrepreneurial spirit. And something that, in fact, we were discussing off air a short while ago is the, the, the number of of entrepreneurs and, and startup founders who do mm. struggle when it comes to mental health. That's right. And it's something that is very rarely touched on in the media. Uh, there was a study in California uh, in 2015. 49% so of entrepreneurs reported, startup entrepreneurs reported having mental health issues. And in Australia, it was it's recognized to be more than 30%, which is more than double the average. So, you know, when you're a month away from going broke and there's all these expectations on you to be so successful in business or at least succeed and survive, it's, it's understandable that you're right on the edge the whole time. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm, absolutely. You know, uh, my, my dad, a small business owner, I've seen uh, over in the UK and I've seen him, him mm. go through you know, a, a, a housing crisis, a um, global financial crisis, and it is. It's, it's unsurprising that you mm. do see people who take on a lot of this um, you know, weight and, and business weight, particularly why they would struggle in that marketplace. 
But also, interestingly enough, several of the guests that we've spoken to here on Summer Money, some of their, their greatest ideas and some of their most successful ventures have actually been born out of those, those dark times itself. So it does show you know, that there are perhaps tools or, or ways that you can work through this. And, mm. and that's what's so great about um, Innovest SME, that, that you guys do in fact look to, to educate people who are looking to go into business themselves as a sole trader and look to, in fact, you know, grant them with that knowledge and that practical mm. business advice. Just tell us a little bit more about your workshops. Well, you know, the best thing that ever happened to me was almost going broke in 1990 when my turnover dropped by 70% in six months. So the lessons that I learned in the 80s, I put into practice when I relaunched my business in the 90s. And we went from keeping essentially one cent on the dollar to 30 cents on the dollars. So what we've now done is put all that knowledge over 35 years into a three-day business ownership practitioner course. And my view is that people should do this before they go into business because the stats tell us that only 5% of business owners post startup take up any training of which only 3% implement. Mm. So the majority of training doesn't work. So in the absence of coaching and accountability, we tend to find that uh, the long haul 12 month programs, which are very expensive, you know, you leave university, you're saddled with this huge debt, and then you end up spending uh, a gazillion on another investment, mm. trying to learn what you need to know after you've started, by then it's too late. Mm, of course, give us a, perhaps a case study then or a taster of some of the people who have come to you then and, and some of the, I guess, types of businesses that, that you've helped. Okay, uh, well, there's lots of examples. I, I could use one of my own businesses that went from uh, $250,000 in the first year to $20 million in the fifth year. But a good example is a business that did a similar number within the first four years the guy that ran the uh, business, the entrepreneur, the owner, he had an MBA. He'd never heard of the ACCC. He'd never heard of the DFT. He'd never heard or dealt with any lawyer ever. Mm. And he got himself into some difficulty. That business is now gone. But had that entrepreneur have had this minimum base level knowledge, he would have been in a position to be able mm. to you know, be very successful. So a, a good case study of a sole trader is a guy that uh, is in home automation that we actually have a joint venture with. And he came to us and his problem was not enough leads. And within three months, the problem became too many leads. <laughs> so the dynamics of Terrible dealing with... Terrible problem to have. It, it was a good problem to have, but all of a sudden now he's an employer mm. and he's having to scale the business in a way that you know he wasn't thinking about yeah. prior. Of course. Rick, really appreciate you coming on this evening and, and sharing your story with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.